it's off. It's too late. Remember when you said those vows? In its sickness and in health, oh. till death do us part. For richer. Better for worse. Yeah, for richer or poorer. Yes. People just say those words and don't really understand the import of taking those vows until certain things happen. Yeah. And when they come... You might not be ready. It might make or break your marriage. Yes. Today we want to talk about unforeseen circumstances. circumstances in marriage. Welcome to another episode of... Love and Everything in Between. married for 11 years and six months and in that time we've been through a lot of ups and downs um we've had quite a lot of unforeseen circumstances <laughs> things we didn't plan for things we never thought would happen um things that nobody ever prays for yeah um but i think we should talk, talk about today the about the really significant, yeah, ones, that, significant ones that that really shook shook both of us yeah and I think the first one that comes to mind is um, when you had to have surgery. Yes, um, I kept stalling. So I had this um, particular condition. I never knew what it was really. But I just know that at some point, randomly, I would just get out of breath. I would have this pain in my chest, you know, and then I hate going to the hospital like really hit me into the hospital so i made a couple of calls and then you know self-medication i was told to take a certain um, pain medication and i'll take it and i'll feel fine so that medication i can't get over the counter so i actually have to have ask for prescription so i remember vividly going to the hospital for something else and i was like oh i need to top up on this um pain medication because i had the incident the night before so I went in to see the GP and I was like, oh, I'll, I'm, I don't need you to see me for anything in particular. I would like for you to just give me a prescription for this drug. And the doctor just went, why? So it was a new hospital, new doctor. And I was like, no, I have this um, persisting pain that I take it for. And I was like, okay, what causes the pain? I'm like, I can't do this. Like, if you're not going to give me the medicine, don't worry, I'll go somewhere else. And I was like, no, 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 no. And the guy actually got up and locked the door and was like, I want to really get to the bottom of this. Why? I'm not a fan of just giving medication. And I was really irritated at the time. I was like, you're wasting my time. I need to go. I have things to do. And I was like, bear with me. Just play along. What's causing it? And then, you know, we had a series of questions, had conversation. I told him my history and he says, okay, I want to run this test, this test, this test. And I'm like, I just came here for this. Why am I ending up having to mm. do this? I you know he was calling. I'm like, oh no, it's taking longer than normal. I have to do an ECG. I have to do an x-ray. Like I'm really irritated. But anyway, not a problem. So we did all the tests. And the next day I came in and they're like, oh, my cholesterol level was extremely high. I had to be on some certain drugs to bring down my cholesterol. But that they didn't get a proper reading on the x-ray and would recommend I go see a cardiologist. And I'm like, ah, how did we end up here? You know? So went to the cardiologist. Cardiologist was like, he doesn't think it's a heart problem. I should go and do an MRI. Mm -hmm. So it was when we did the MRI, we now found out that I had a bronchogenic cyst placed right in between my lungs and no, my right. heart. So for every time it was inflamed or large, it was pressing on my heart, which would cause the shortness of breath. And then, you know, because it's in a very awkward space, it would now cause the pain. So, and the only way to get out was going to be surgery. And boy, <laughs> I wasn't interested in having surgery. And I told them, I was like, you know what, guys, you've given me all a lot to think about. Um, I'm going to get back to you. I'm going to get back to you guys. And um, I just need time out, you know? So I called a zillion doctors asking what is the best way how do i get rid of it you know and everybody kept saying be with, 
the longer you take, it's going to keep getting bigger. So I was like, okay. So we went on a trip, came back, and then I went to see a bronchogenic, no, a, what's the name of the doctor? The cardiothoracic name? surgeon. Yeah, cardiothoracic surgeon. <laughs> I'd never heard of all these names before. So we had to go see one, and then he was like, oh, he would have to do a surgery, open my side, open my ribs, get the mask out, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm not doing that. You know, and I was like, oh, recovery time would be more, you know, so it was just like a lot, a lot of information. And I was just like, I wasn't ready. And I actually avoided having to do that surgery for the longest of times. It was like a year, a year plus. I kept, you know, diddly daddling. Even the doctor I had seen said, okay. He eventually saw another surgery. Yeah, so he said, said that I wanted to do minimal, yeah, minimal evasive which is not having to give me a big scar because my skin also doesn't um, feel, well. feel well with scars. So I said, okay, fine. I did that. And then he recommended the doctor that could do it minimal evasively. I went to see him and I was even, I'd even worked myself up to saying, okay, I would do it. But um, the costs, they kept changing the cost on me. So I just said, you know what? If they're this um, meat picky, about the cost that i'm not sure about the aftercare and i don't want to die so <laughs> i didn't go for it and then i started having more pain and eventually i'd agreed went in for surgery so i had to call my mom to come stay with the kids because i didn't know how strong i would be after surgery and after surgery thankfully everything was fine i came out i was doing well recovery was happening so i think the next day after surgery my mom comes to see me and we're all having a we're conversation, all having a conversation yeah. and i'm like okay mommy what do you want to eat and then she says she doesn't say anything and i'm like she's just quiet for a little while this is really weird mommy what do you want to eat and, and then, then she, the next she just goes and then then she just starts like and she has a seizure like, right there a, and i'm with so she has tube it's you taking out liquid fluid from, from my body, body the and drip is in her arm <laughs> and i'm and like everything. i need to help my so, mom so she j jumps off i jump off the bed i take off I'm my drip hold her mom and i'm like <laughs> so i have her her mom like in a seizure she's you know pulling out the drip and everything and i'm you know and everybody was just chaos everybody was freaking out and then <laughs> but luckily we were in a hospital as in, we were in the hospital. So the you response know, we was for the quick. Doctors, the doctors came. And then she just, her mom just kept having seizure after Multiple seizure seizures. after seizure. And I was just like, okay. And then <laughs> in her mind, she was like, oh, my mom is dying. <laughs> my mom is dying right now. Like, <laughs> I thought it was because of me. I thought maybe I'd stressed her. And I, I kept blaming myself. It turns, I think it turns out that she had, um, she had this condition where basically she was having seizures and she l totally lost her entire memory. Like completely. She didn't know who I was. She didn't know who we were. So it's almost like... It was a reset. She was, like somebody hit her reset button and... She had to start all over again. And I had been spending all the time in the hospital because... She was in hospital. And then we had the kids. And then the kids were, she was the one that was so there. Supposedly taking care of the kids. And then she just, you know, has that situation. And it just became, it, it was, it was strain. It was strenuous on the marriage yes. because I, I was supposed to be healing. And everybody was telling me, you need to, you need to recover. You need to recover. And I'm like, I don't understand what people are saying. If I'm recovering and then she goes, I will be in the house and then what are people going to tell me? No. So with swollen feet, swollen arms, I was pacing a new hospital because I was discharged from my <laughs> hospital and I was taken to my mom's hospital and I was just, everybody was just tired. I think at me. some point in time we had to see this. Right? Yes. Mm, when I was just in that logical place of... Yeah, it was very annoying. Like, just let's <laughs> fix the problem. You are not capable so take yourself out of out the situation. Yeah. The children need to eat. They need to bath. I need to go. Make sure that they get that done. Come back. Make sure you're okay. Follow up with the consultants who are trying to figure out what was wrong with her mom. Because I remember that we were trying to take her for an MRI, for example. And she once you move her, she has a seizure. seizure. And, you know, they were trying 
various medications. So it was it was just it was almost like a trial and yes. error. error so it was of. just a really tough time because I can't break down and start crying or you understand being upset. I just need to sort it out. You're being emotional emotional all over the place and not seeming to understand basic logic of sit down and rest. You want to see her, we take you, you see her, then you go back. You understand, but your kids want to see you. You're not even receptive to your kids. It was just, it was insane. But I'm um, thankful that she's fine. I'm fine. The kids don't remember. No, they don't. And uh, we were able to pull out of that. Because even that period, it wasn't like I, I would say, um, if you now said you had needs, I'm like... I won't even be thinking about it. No, that's what I'm saying. But some people might... That's a very weird time to be thinking about it. You say? Should be say it's food. Yeah, but it's like there are times when you fast. <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay. It's okay. It's not it's not it's not at that kind of time. Um the, I think the second the second one was uh, that was more Yeah, it was a bit, that was a bit that that one shook us. Yes. A lot. A lot, more. yeah. Because that was when I had um surgery. Mm-hmm. I had um, a torn tendon and I didn't even know what was going on for the longest of time. Yeah. And eventually, um, it turned out I had to have surgery because, you know, I did physiotherapy for a really long time. Long time. That. But for some strange reason, and I think that was when I finally understood your fear. For surgery. For surgery. I just <laughs> didn't want to do Go under. But, so I'm an extremely logical person and I, you know, I asked about the process he told me, oh, this is how it's going to work. This is what's going to happen. And it was pretty straightforward. So it was pretty straightforward. But I just had this unshakable fear. Yeah. And I kept telling, I remember telling everybody, I told the physiotherapist, the surgeon, just kept telling everybody, I don't want to do this surgery. And, you know, they would explain it to me. And logically, it made sense. And even I didn't understand. Why are you were like, afraid? Why am I scared? Like, it's a surgery. And then it was arthroscopic. Yeah. Everything, I think everything was fine. They told me that it was going to be general anesthesia. Yeah. I think that was the problem. Yeah. It's like, well, you're going to put, knock me out. No. And I rationalized it and thought to myself, okay, maybe I just don't like the fact that I'm going to lose control. Like, yeah. I wouldn't be in control. So of that's how I rationalized thought, it yeah. in my head. Like, oh, I, I'm not going to be in control. I'm not going to know what's happening. I'm not. So that's, that's the issue. You know? And I remember that it wasn't a big deal for you. You'd done surgery and all and that. Come so it, like, it was like, everybody was just like, guy, let's do the thing. And I remember the day we, they fixed the surgery. Um, it was supposed to be on a Friday. And I just had this, it was Easter. And I just had this weird premonition that it was not going to, everything was going to go downhill. But there was hope on Sunday. I don't. I, it, it didn't really make sense to me. It just it just like there's hope on Sunday, but like everything is just, you know. So we went to the hospital. You know, the surgery. They told me you do it in the morning, come out in by the evening. evening. We should be open. so we went together. Bill was supposed to go to some other places. Yeah. So it was just drop him off. Um, come back and he pick does him. the surgery. I'll go off while he's doing the surgery. Come back, and you know, I pick him up. And. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll go, go home, home in the evening. And you didn't go. So you went in and then he comes out and he's like, oh, everything went well, you know. So I was like, so my man, okay, all right, so now I can go, but I have to just wait for them to bring him out. And and I was waiting and I was waiting and I was like, ah, what's going on? And people kept calling, is he out? No, I'm still waiting. What's going on? I'm waiting. And... I remember getting rather impatient, like walked up like, okay, so now I've done surgery. I don't think it mm-hmm. took this long. And they bring him out and I look at him. So like when they were wheeling him out of the tent, I was standing at the corridor and I looked at him and I was like, why is he, I, I, I didn't even realize I said it out. I just said, why is he breathing like this? And the anesthetics, the anesthesia person goes, to deal, is he not breathing? I was like, okay, did I say something wrong? Mm. I'm like, okay, just you know what, just chill, let them finish what they have to do and put them in recovery. 
you take it up from there. So I was waiting and then they're trying to fix the ox oxygen, you know, trying to move it from the theater bed to the bed. Luckily, you were still on the theater bed because the person that was supposed to bring oxygen was being clumsy or something. Was, everything was just being, and I was just getting really irritated and I was looking at them and I was looking, I kept looking at you. I remember looking at you very well and I was like, ah, something is not just adding up, but I'm not a medical person, so I didn't know what to say. And the next thing she just says, Madam, talk to your husband. Okay. I thought you said he was fine. Mm, yes, you know, your husband. She said, call your husband's name. Call your husband's name. And I'm like, ah, call my husband's name. You know, and in my mind, I'm like, Rugba. <laughs> Rugba, like, and she's like, she just told the nurse, leave, leave, leave. She releases the tire and next thing, they just wheel you back in and I'm like, what just happened, what just happened now? <laughs> you know? And doctors, I want to appeal to you people. I know you folks went to school, you have seen it all, you are, you have, you have, <laughs> we the family members, information, is key because i stood at that corridor i literally almost entered the theater like nobody was telling me anything just running by and, and they just come out they run I, I saw one coming with oxygen tank is that for my husband no no man it's not for him and i'm like what was happening i just saw him you know and it now clicks to me that the surgeon that had the surgery He's not even there. Because he has finished what he He's finished. So I had to go downstairs and he was on the phone. He was very, I'm coming, I'm coming. And I, I, <laughs> nobody prepares you for these things. And I'm like, so I, I, I now do like this. He says, okay. And I said, they've taken him back in. He, I don't even think I finished that sentence. He freaked out. The guy just freaked out and ran. I was like, okay, now definitely something, something wrong. is wrong. But it turned out that he had actually aspirated after surgery. So mm -hmm. his lungs had collapsed. So he wasn't breathing. They were trying to resuscitate him. They were trying to get him to breathe. He wasn't breathing. So they had put him on the ventilator. But nobody told me anything. So I'm standing out there. I don't have information. Family members are calling. I don't know what to tell them. I can't answer any questions. I'm now panicking. And in a very short, in a very, in a very short moment, in me trying to tell him to not give up. Like in my spirit's mind, like, okay, Roba, please, everything will be fine. I didn't feel the connection. So I already assumed the worst, like he's gone. I mean, there was a time while I was still in the coma where a doctor friend, you know, yeah, had all said, the doctors were just saying, oh, don't worry, let's watch it, let's watch it. And then one of the doctors just, just said, said you, let's be real. This guy, he's gone. He's probably not. He's going probably to make not going to make it. Like so. people don't, people don't survive this. So you know what? Percentage of people that survive That's comas right. are very, very. No, not slim. the coma. It was the fact that the, I had aspirated, aspirated for that doing, long. Yes. I was like, you know what? So she came to literally prepare me, like, okay, if we need to take do morgue um, arrangements. So she literally was there to prepare me that this might happen. I had to prepare for if if it went south, what am I going to tell the kids? What are the what are the plans? And you know, everyone around you is telling you, don't cry. Don't let the devil see your tears. Don't. And in my mind, I'm like, you guys don't even know where my mind is right now. I'm thinking, okay, how am I going to get money? What do I need to sell? What am I going to, am I changing the kids' school? What's their life going to be? What, you know, I, I, I had all those scary thoughts and I'm like, something just has to happen. And I'm thankful that God was faithful and brought him out of it. The recovery process was another toll mm. on... <laughs> You know, when you're telling someone, be thankful you're alive and he's grumpy he because he can't do the things that he used to do. He needed to depend I think, on I think, me. I think one of the most humiliating things for people in hospitals and I mean, nurses and all these guys do their best, but the fact that you can't do anything for yourself at all. down to you can't wipe your own butt, you can't take a bath, there's someone just sponging you off. You can't move. Like I was just literally lying there lying there and you know people are just doing things to you so it's not like they're doing i mean they're doing stuff for you but you feel like they're just doing things to you, to you. so someone just comes just and the person just come, your shoves <laughs> a needle into you and your brain is aware you're feeling the pain yeah you know all that so it was it was such a crazy time and recovery for him to it was longer, long it was long because I, 
it was almost like you ha- you also had it was like a death. reset so because i actually had to i couldn't walk it was strange i couldn't walk i couldn't control pee i could it was just even your breathing i couldn't yeah it was just so it was, weird it was and, a lot. And she was there constantly. I had to be the, I had to be the trooper. Constantly. You know, I was saying, tired. No, on, you know, I was like, let's, let's do this. I'll be encouraging. You know, there's that, at least, you are here. You are here. So, you said this one. Uh, it's, it's okay. If you people want to fight, it's yes. okay. Yes. Uh, because but, you didn't, the, 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 the three days of what I had experienced, mm. I would not wish it on anyone. Mm. So, if it was, he was going to spit at me. <laughs> it's okay. You are sure here you know so he put a lot of pressure on himself like oh why can't i move my arm I, i've lost i've lost recovery time because mm-hmm. i was in the coma and in my head i'm like dude calm down you are even happy you should be you're happy alive. you're alive you know sure. so it's 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 it it's of, affected it's yeah. affected because i wasn't understanding the level the drive to you know i mean because I, I kept feeling like he was beating himself up too much as far as I was concerned, like cut yourself some slack. Your body is resetting. Mm. Your body is learning again how to do these things. Even using his laptop, it was a chore because we'll have to set it up. And then he was getting tired easily. Like it was frustrating for him. But I understood. And in all of this, as much as I was always caring for him, it was taking its toll on me because I wouldn't. I'll be like, you don't worry, you, you, you catch up on you catch up on sleep or you catch up on work or you catch up on mm. you just have to be here for Rob, but you know, he needs this, he needs he need if he wants to lament, you need to be very attentive, mm. you need to give it the emotion he needs. But nobody asked me, How, how you are you? Doing? How are you coping? Now the kids are back home. You know, so it just felt like Nobody cared how I how how I dealt with it because everybody was all like, "Oh, Rob, uh-huh. oh." And then I kept feeling guilty about that. Yes, like I'm, I'm causing stress. I'm becoming a burden. burden. I'm causing stress for these people, so I need to suck it up. Stop being a burden. Just don't be a burden anymore. Get yourself together. So, you know that that phrase, "Be a man." It was drilled into my head as a child. It was drilled into a lot of people's heads. Like a lot of men, not be a man, be a man, be a man. So, you know, at that point, you're trying to be a man. You're human. Yeah. We're all human. It, there's no, there's no medal for, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but just we're human. Let us be human. You will have stress. You will have frustration. You will need to cry. You will need to be upset. It's okay. Just don't dwell there. Yeah. But it's actually okay to let those emotions, those emotions come, through. Um, come through. And so, then eventually, once you know the worst of it all had passed, it now took like a concerted effort for us to actually say, "Guy, um, Auntie, bro, what happened was it? What has happened? What has happened? Right now, we need to figure a way to click back. Yeah. If not." You know, the, we'll the just continue drifting apart, apart yeah. and we're able to do that. Um, thankfully, we had a really strong support system, family, yes, friends that um, were there. And um, people, you know that whole thing of, um, I'm I'm going, it's just me and my wife. It's just my wife, my husband and I. I mean, it's good in the sense of, yes, you guys are a unit. A unit but that support system is extremely important. You can't because take it for granted. Mm. without them i don't see how we would have been able to come through either of those two situations um and it also made us realize that planning for the future is also very was also important. very important Section. because Some. god forbid it had gone south um somebody sits you down and tells you mm. oh um yeah you know your wife might be in the hospital for an extended period of time she won't be able to work, work or able to do anything nobody tells you oh your husband i mean in, in the hospital but it tells you, there's no income coming yeah, in but it tells you you might lose your job nobody tells you that your husband may die your wife may die do you understand nobody tells you that so you, you there's a need to plan so i think for us what we now decided was to do um uh, yes we started planning, uh, planning, we started planning. Okay, if anything like this because i think we had gone through too many things i mean even like, before these two things there were just so, so many, many other things so I mean, many i lost my 
business at a point. Like, I literally had no zero income. income. Zero. Like, everything I had built just came crashing down in, like... Seconds. Like, you know, it was all gone. Yeah. And recovering from that was a whole, whole other, other process. Yeah. So, I think um, planning is very key. Planning together. Um, planning for those times when... You know, when... I, I mean, I remember when... Um, my sister-in-law kept telling me, oh, you know what, why don't you just get health insurance? Why don't you just get health insurance? Why don't you just get health insurance? I was like, why am I getting health insurance? I didn't fall ill. I don't fall sick. The kids don't fall sick. But so these people are just going to collect my money. They're just going to take it and then everything is going to... And there was this... Um, so two times it happened. It's just so weird. So the first time was when my daughter... I was supposed to pay health insurance for her for a 100k. Was One 10, of them, I'm supposed to pay 100k for health insurance. I was like, he was stolen. I'll just, just pay them 100k, and then they would just not do anything, and then blah and blah and blah. And then my son fell ill, and he was in the hospital for the weekend, and I paid 150k. That I would have just paid 100k for the year. I paid 150k for that weekend, and that made me do health insurance for him. But stubborn me. I still couldn't you didn't learn your find lesson. the logic of doing health insurance for myself. You didn't learn your lesson. Why am I doing health insurance for myself? But somehow, you know, they, you know, just do this health insurance. You know, one guy came, spoke plenty of English, blah, 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 gave me the pros and cons. I was like, okay, you know what, I'll just do health insurance. So, you know, I did the health insurance. And then there was this day I went with health I was very livid at that. For a, yeah, was, and she was even upset that. See, but was you, but you don't go to the hospital. hospital. Like, you literally do not go to the hospital. You've never, never been. I don't recall. Never, I don't have, since I've known you. You know, so why are you paying this one? I was like, yeah, the guy explained the pros, the cons, blah, she did all the logic. And then I followed her to the hospital, so she was having a checkup. While I was there, I was like, oh, I have let me just, insurance. Yeah, I have health insurance. Let well, me just check register and check my blood pressure. This woman checks my blood pressure, stands up and runs into the, into the <laughs> doctor's office. And I'm like, what's wrong with that? And then the doctor runs out. And they're both like, you need to get um, ad an admission right now. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, ah. What's, What's going happening? on? And the next thing you know, I was admitted in hospital for like a week. Yeah. My blood pressure was like, I just been having so headaches. Move, so I've been having headaches. And I was like, mm. so I'm just trying to imagine. Okay, in that situation, I didn't have the health insurance. What would have happened? What would have happened? Then I'll be paying out of pocket for something that you all that. Avoided. You understand? So I think it's just plan. You really need to plan. You need to have a, a strong support system. You need to. You need to think. I don't want to say think the worst. So it's just prepare for the worst. I mean, plan for the best. But prepare Hope for, for the best. best and prepare but for prepare the for the worst because it can happen. There's that whole it, it, it I, will not I've heard to of me. it, but it, it won't can happen, happen to, me. to me. But it can. It can. It could happen to anyone. So um in um in conclusion, we've said we've said a lot about um I think majorly what we shared has been health related, yeah. unforeseen circumstances. circumstances. Uh -huh. That seems to be the most common, but a lot more there types, lots, there are a lot more things other things that could happen. But we wanted to just share this too. And in conclusion, from what we experienced, what we basically would advise or the tips we would give would be planning. Um, let your, if your kids are old enough, let them know what is in place. Um, health insurance. Let your spouse know what is in. Let place. your spouse also know what is in place. That's because very key. Because if I, if he had been the type that we used to could. hide or could, I would have been very stranded, like yeah. extremely stranded. But thankfully, we are very open with each other. So I even had. <laughs> I think my fingerprint was also. Yeah, it, it on my phone. So yeah. when I when I was on that, she needed to call people. Oh, she I, could, to I had somebody. access to his phone. So just, you know. Use her thumb and all of that do what was necessary at the time. If she didn't know that, then she would be running around trying to figure out why am I going to get money or where am I going to do this or where am I going to do that? Or who can I call? So, yeah, just know? yeah, your units. Your so, units. so have these conversations. Very, key. very, very important. Um, health yeah. insurance. Health insurance. A will. A I know that will is a very sensitive. Will trust. It's a very it sensitive is. topic, but please, no matter how young you are, yeah, a will is fun. actually very necessary. Just prepare. Prepare. On the next episode of love and everything in between we'll be having a guest on yeah. someone who um has been who ended up in an unforeseen circumstance exactly. and we'll talk to her about how she's been able to handle, handle that and navigate. And navigate that process so, so. that you next time
marriage is great when you know you're you're together. Now I know how awesome my marriage was. What? Now that I don't have this anymore, yeah. so it's beyond you know love, and it, it's just having to live with someone and just understand that people change. Yeah, the good one. As you can see on camera now, we know who the good one is. Yeah. How, 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 what do you mean? Remember how in um. <clears throat> Remember how the <laughs> a witchcraft is playing? I can't sit like this. It's impossible. Like I can't. No, I mean physically I can't. Hi, Fumi. Hi, hey, Fumi. She's there. Oh, hi. So we're almost rounding up. Then you come in. Okay. Nobody sits you down and tells you, mm. oh, um, your wife might be in the hospital for an extended period of time she won't be able to work, work or... she won't be able to do anything nobody tells you that your husband may die your wife may die do you understand nobody tells you that so you, you, you there's a need to plan about unforeseen circumstances there are some other times in our life in our <laughs> married life that we've had really big issues that have taken a huge toll on our marriage and i think one of the issues that we've had has been with my mom yeah gong gong that is the <laughs> that's the real, unforeseen, that's the real unforeseen word yeah. so my mom is has always been a very independent um firebrand type woman she's no nonsense no nonsense she gets stuff done and she she's always just been young like she, i i try to remember my mom when i was young and my mom when i'm older and it's pretty much the same person with the same energy the same everything there's not been much of a difference and then one year yeah. she just started having these decline depression uh, issues it wasn't even really a physical thing because it was a physical thing because it would have been easy to, even say, easy to okay. say okay it's a physical thing yeah. let's address it but we just started noticing the little things she was paranoid she just started getting paranoid about certain anxious. things she would be anxious about stuff and all of a sudden we didn't pick, we didn't pick, we didn't pick up on the signs and by the we just time kept, we just kept thinking she was being difficult difficult yeah, yeah. like why, why are you being difficult? difficult blah 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 and then because obviously she's strong willed and all that we just thought she was being yeah so on. there was a lot of give us she would sort herself out you know but by the time she was eventually diagnosed you know when covid happened was what now escalated so, okay yes when covid, COVID happened, happened now all these issues now became really pronounced yeah and then after some time, we eventually figured it out. And then she got diagnosed and found out that she had anxiety and depression. And it was bad. Like, and the crazy thing, what they don't really tell you about mental health is what, I mean, a psychiatrist had to explain this to us. She's in her own reality. She has her reality. reality and that, that reality different is as real to her as, as we are here. Her reality yeah. is to us. So you are battling against someone who completely believes that what they're saying, what they're doing, what they believe is happening is to fact. them is fact. It's irre irrefutable fact. I remember like there were times where she couldn't be alone by herself because she didn't have strength she was she was falling but she would never admit it she would you know try to do she things she would try to her drugs talk. then you're trying to give her medication she <laughs> thinks she 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 thought we were trying to poison, poison her <laughs> like it was absolutely crazy so we had to be doing like shifts shifts like there was this I, I think i had to call my mom to our i had to call my mom about. like mommy please i need you okay. because i'm not okay. even around i'm i'm yeah. upstairs with grandma I, I can't leave her and the kids come back from school. My, I don't have a full-time nanny. So I just need you to come. Just help me take care of the children. And she can't handle my mom alone. I can't handle my mom alone. 
So we were just. And you had this. work. Yes, and I still had you work. You had work. I wasn't working. So, was so I was the one with her. There was this tag team thing that we ended up doing. So I'd go to work. She'd be with her during the day. Then I'd come back. At, I'd be with her overnight. It was just. It was just completely crazy. Like, really crazy things. Like, she would. There was one. I remember one particular incident where she thought, like, her room was on fire. Yes. And there was nothing. She would come out. Smoke, like, smoke. Can't you people see the smoke? Can't you see it? And it was so. Mommy, crazy. there's no smoke. No, you people can't. Oh. You're not seeing what I'm seeing. And I'm like, ha. It, it was it was so crazy. And uh, my siblings don't live in Nigeria. They all live abroad. And, you know, they were trying to. They couldn't come because there was a travel yeah, ban. There was yeah, there was there COVID. There was travel ban. Yeah. So they were trying to, you know, get in touch and all that. So and every time I was with her, I would constantly do video, video calls without her knowing. Just so that they could see, see her. her because if she knew, because I would use them to threaten and be like, I'll call them to come. She'll be like, ah, yeah, don't call them to come. I'll eat. I'll eat. Okay, I'll take the medicine. She wasn't I'll eating. Do. So I would find different ways to cajole her. And then she, at some point, she now started having actual physical symptoms because her health now started deteriorating. deteriorating. Yeah. So it, we now started dealing with the health challenge and the, the, the mental health challenge together. And... It was tough. It was tough as a couple. <laughs> and this is, I mean, this is your family member. You can't throw them away. Yeah. I remember once when we had to have her admitted in the hospital and it was a struggle. It was a very emotional because day. Because it now felt like we yeah, were leaving her. her. And then she felt like we were completely abandoned. I won't forget, she held on to me for so long. So like, long. And she, I shouldn't leave her. I promise me. I'll be good. I I'll promise be, I'll be don't good. Leave me, don't, don't leave me. You know, but you know that you have to Keep them Keep there. Had them. It was it, it was, was so crazy. It was emotional. It was it was, emotional. it was it was a really tough time and nothing, nothing prepares you for prepares that. you for that. And I honestly can't say categorically, other than the fact that you know we are a unit and we had agreed to always face things together. How we got through that time? Yeah. Because I mean, it was Even enough. The doctors for, had to advise us that yes, guys, guys, you can't expand. You, 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 you can't. You can't do beyond what you can do because yeah. if you don't take it easy it you will, will it will take a toll on, on your marriage it will take a toll on your health yeah because you know there was that constant it's a full-time job, job dealing with someone that i mean it's, it, like i said if it was a completely physical thing you know that okay take this medication and i remember when they were trying medications so cool. because they don't really know which one is going to work and then some medications will have it completely there was one time medication they were given that she was fainting she was hallucinating there was one she was hallucinating it was just insane and thankfully you know we we're able to get through that by just agreeing that we'll be together i mean there'll be times i'll be short fused <laughs> because i'm cranky i'm stressed and i'm, I'm wondering why and, are you cranky yeah and then there are times she's short fused and upset and i'm like is where we are what do you want me to do about it you know that kind of thing but we didn't allow we didn't allow the circumstance come between us because we understood that we were not the enemy of each other. We were not fighting each other. We had a problem, a challenge that we needed to we face. Together. We needed to try and fix it together. And I think that's that's how we were able to overcome to get through that. that because yeah. if not, mm -hmm. I mean, people have gotten divorced for less. And I feel like love is key. Love. I, I, I preach love like love heals a lot of things love it's not easy because love is not an emotion yes you just have it's to act it like i think people need to really understand love is not an emotion yeah. love is an action an action it's you have decision. to yeah i'm going to do this thing because i believe that this person the needs deserves it even if they don't deserve it not deserve needs, i believe that this person needs, needs it. exactly yeah. that's needs, it yeah so and strangely enough Till date, it is me. Should yeah. Do I have a code? That's should I take? Thing. I'll not be like, okay, it's not really a code, but I think okay. If it if you think it's a code, let's try this, this, this. If she's going to the hospital, ah, it's beyond not coming. You know, it's beyond that knows mm. what's going on. And I'm always like, okay, why? But because even when I get, <laughs> as in at times when I would just get short fused, and I'm like, no, no, you know, no, you have to it's beyond that. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Yeah. Hey, mommy, what do you want? You know, so we I now think, realize that, I think, okay. I think it's, it's, you know, after that. And you know that thing they say about what doesn't kill you makes you it's stronger. stronger. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of truth to that. I believe that our marriage is stronger because we've been through quite a number of things that didn't, because it didn't break us, you know, we're able to 
yeah hold get stronger stand and be stronger okay. I, I believe that um so, so we have a guest yeah, with us yes have, um someone also has been through an unforeseen really circumstance and it's and it's it's one thing that i think is my worst nightmare and um she has somehow been able to go through that and i i think it would be great to you know just hear from her and figure out and listen to how she was able to navigate that situation or is still navigating Getting that it. situation so we have in our building <laughs> on set with us for me, for me. <laughs> awesome for me who is always looking <laughs> fly beautiful <laughs> <laughs> you're too kind <laughs> Yeah, it's so, great to be here. Thank you for coming. Beautiful com- setup. I'm, I'm excited. I'm really humble. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you guys are my uh, therapist for the day. <laughs> <laughs> we're happy. We're happy. We're that. happy. We're happy to help. Yeah. So, Fumi, tell us quickly what you do. Uh, okay, uh, Fumi Ayayide. I am a mom of two. Recently widowed. I'm still trying to get used to that term to describe myself. Uh, Oh, no, Mm. not so early on into the conversation. (laughs) We'll get to it. Yeah, so what I do, uh, what I did for a couple of years, uh, uh, I did some talent work, anchor work uh, with Silver Bear Television. And then on, I moved to producing and directing. And uh, I left in 2020 uh when the pandemic hits because mm-hmm. i was just over it i was i was burnt out i was tired i was on a live show breakfast show five days a week it didn't matter if it was christmas yes. i had to be there so and i had worked for 16 years straight through wow. two two babies and my kind of pregnancy was you see me at work today and then you just hear oh for me had a baby yesterday <laughs> wow and then in three months i'm back, back at, at work. work so i never really had time i never really took breaks i love the job and you know I'm, and i'm really grateful for that you know all of that you know that's just part of uh the things you go through in life that's kind of shape you so i left in 2020 i was over it i didn't care i didn't want to work in my mind i was retired so i, I didn't want to do anything after that and then i uh just stumbled into esthetician life okay. and it became a permanent Part makeup yeah tattoo artist and you know opened up a spa i was you know soft soft, soft life, life. <laughs> i became my own boss i didn't yeah. care you know just doing my own things you know and uh sometime this year i just got a call someone goes uh for me do you want to come back to media i'm like yeah the price is right let's see let's see how it goes so i did a zoom interview and before you know i i got the job Job as a entertainment producer oh so yeah back back into that life again again. (laughs) but it's not not as hectic as it was honestly it's like super easy this time (laughs) yeah because i'm even having to go to my line manager like can you give me something more stimulating more (laughs) talented so i don't you know end up just crying at work because I'm doing nothing. Oh, okay. You know? So yeah, so ah, uh, yeah. So that's that's it about me. What do I like to do? I like I'm very introverted. Forget anything you see or maybe my tattoos or anything. I like I really like people. I like to be by myself. <laughs> Is that weird? I'm weird. No, no, no. no it's fine. It's fine. I'm sure you have a lot of people like, like you too. I like to go out. I just like to stay home. Oh. I like I do a lot of reading, meditating. You know, I'm very spiritual like that. So I like, I believe in energies. Yeah. I, I believe in God and all of that. But I also believe in the universe and, you know, vibes. That you because get. that's what you can really pick up. It doesn't matter what kind of face someone gives you. You can yeah. always tell when yeah, the person has a good genuine, vibe. Yeah. yeah, or not. You know, okay. just kind of sense their vibe and feel their hearts and all of that. So, yeah, I think that's, that's me. That's and you. then, which is weird because I, with everything that's happened to me recently... I'm almost kind of losing my identity and having to find myself again. again. It's really hard. I have, uh, sorry, my, my thoughts are all about the place. <laughs> no, it's so fine. You can get me just we'll, we'll, we'll rope you in. Right, please do that. When you see me just, you know, ranting. <laughs> I have a friend I call, he's in the UK, a high school friend, you know. So he's almost like my therapist, yes, you know, yeah, that's that what I you talk, talk to, to and everything. And I found myself telling him two days ago, like, I feel like someone took my mind away from me and has replaced it with someone else that I'm trying to figure out who, yeah, who that yeah, person is. Person. Because I see things I used to like just a few months ago. I don't care. 
and uh, just like almost like my personality is still there. I'm still introverted. I still all of the things I mentioned, but I'm almost like trying to still figure myself out. Mm -hmm. I'm 44 years old, you know, and I should have it pretty much, you Put know, back by now. Out, yeah, but I'm still. It's almost like it's something <laughs> it's like a child trying yeah, to navigate. figure out, yeah, what you want to do with your life, life. and what's you know what you. Just mm. it's just hard. Well, you've gone through. We've a, gone through a lot. A really big, big change, <laughs> and I think um, huge, yes, huge. And I think that marriage be becomes a huge part of your identity yeah. when it happens. So as much as you're like, as much as I'm Rogba, she's Bio. Right. Right. I'm Bio's husband, uh -huh. and if I were to lose that, it would be like. I can imagine trying Being to. Being a different know, person. Because I'm Tenny's dad. Uh -huh, you know, yeah. there's, so there are these other facets of it. Um, so you said what you've gone through recently, and I, I assume that you're talking about the fact that you've been you've, you've been widowed. Yes. Um, first of all, what was what was marriage like? Ah, <laughs> that's what nobody ever tells you. <laughs> you know, you know, it's still death does pass. You know, sickness and health. Oh. We, we went through the whole sickness part. Okay, first of all, we uh together for we're together for nineteen years. We oh. dated for five years, married for fourteen years. Mm -hmm. So that's like a lifetime. A lifetime. Literally yeah. a lifetime. The early days were great, which is weird because when he passed, those were the memories. That kept going. Yeah, because uh, I'm not going to lie, it was, it was up, up and down, down, up and down. And um, lots of challenges, you know, marriage is just, it's just hard. But the good thing about it, it gets easier as the kids get older. Yeah. Because no matter what your husband is doing, you look at your kids and you think, I'm not going to have it any other way. I was meant to be here. These are the kids I, I want to Yeah, have. and it had to be with you. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, marriage is great when, you know, you're, you're together. Now I know how awesome my marriage was what? now that I don't have this anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's beyond, you know, yeah, you know, love. And it, it's just having to live with someone and just understand that people change. He changed, I changed as well. Yeah. And we're just able to coexist and live together. It was, it was great. I have tons of memories. Great. It was great. You know, I just, just knew you have a companion. And you know, this is me that doesn't like to go anywhere. We were. And, so he was, was that, that kind of person, person as well. So we, we really gelled on that. A good, a perfect night for us to be, you know, just order in and, and watch a movie. Wow. You know, so it got me on tons of series that I know in my life. I even Game of Thrones. I mean, like, it was great, but I mean, it wasn't that Your type of, yeah, your type of, oh, no, don't no, say that. Because someone, no, I, yeah. I know, I know. I feel like Game of Thrones, you know, they're like series for men and they're series for women. women. I just feel like it was, it was leaning more towards like the guys. No, for me. It's like, because I'm still. a fan. I'm going to let it go. I'm I'm gonna, go. <laughs> we'll have this argument forever. Yeah. And there's also something about, I, I when something is so mainstream and everybody's honest, I feel like it's not so niche anymore okay. and I don't want to be part of it. Oh, so okay. that's, that, that okay. was okay. what that's it was fair. for me again. Okay. Everybody in the office was talking about it and I was over it. It's like uh, uh, Black Panther. I didn't see it until like a year later because I was just like, Oh, everybody is honest, you yeah. know, but there are so many great movies that came out this year that nobody knows about. So I'm always very particular like that. So I think m marriage marriage was great. It was uh, first five years, awesome. Oh, really? Next five years, ugh, yeah. not so great. And then you're dating someone that is, sorry, married to someone that is like a celebrity. You know, yeah. sometimes they, they, they get, you know, a big head. And, you know, you tend to... Kind of be relegated to the back burner, burner like this, you yeah. know, and because they're kind of like center of attraction. Yeah, like I have to do this, I have to go here, I have to, I have to. So we had that for the, almost like the next five, five years. years. It was hard for me to adjust to that because we're coming from you. That's is, is you now. So you to, always be on the way, you know. Yeah, you're not big time when you're yeah. in this house. Like yeah. I, I can't even relate to you on that level. On that level. But once in a while, maybe I go somewhere and I hear his voice on the radio. I'm like, huh. It's not so bad, you know. You know, 
but yeah, it's still it's still on it's still, it's still on air. Yeah. yeah, so I'm not I'm not bothered. Yeah. You know? So with, that was for me the biggest issues we had, and of course you know with marriage there's always money issues. Yeah. As uh, in law issues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so many factors issues. that come into that, but yeah, but it was a great marriage. Now that you know, you look back. Yeah, it, it was it was awesome. We're coming, and what was so weird for me and so incredibly painful for me was. We had gone through so much and we're just coming out on the other side. You know, there are certain things, you know, I can't share because yeah. it's like just my me saying and yeah. there's nobody to back up what I'm saying. Say. So I'd rather not just say, yeah. you know, but I'll just say there were difficult times. And especially when uh, he had a health scare in 2018, he had a stroke. It could just like you were saying, Rob, I said I could relate yeah. to it. To that, not knowing he was going to come out of a stroke, not knowing he was going to die. Yeah, I heard he about that. All his muscle functions. I, I remember I was upset with him when yeah. I had, I, I, I think he had posted something on social right. media. I commented, he didn't. So, but he now sent me a WhatsApp message yeah. and I was like, ah, bros, now it's been a long time. And you're like, oh, I just got out of a stroke. I think I just yeah. went, leave. I went, I went <laughs> ballistic on him. Yeah. And I'm like, why would you do this? You know, and then we had a very long conversation. Right. And we said, okay, yeah. we'll definitely continue keeping in right. touch and all of that. So I can't even imagine what that would have uh, done. It was it was really difficult because I had to stop work for like four months, you know. Wow. The company supported, but by the third month, you know, they cut me off, but they kept him on, on. on the payroll. Everything you guys just shared, we were could, feeling helpless could, yeah, and, you know, you could relate. we went through all of that and for me i didn't know if he was ever going to walk again because he could talk he could eat he could do all of that so i didn't have to feed him but i had to bathe him i had to change his diapers you know and all of that which was crazy and we had a physio guy that would come every day and help him walk so in in four months he was back to walking you know everything diet was on point you know everything was great but then shortly after that, a couple of years later, of course, he, you know, because he, he, had, he was retired, he wasn't big time anymore. So he kind of lost his identity, I think. And now that I think about it, maybe there was a bit of, you know, mental health issues at the time. He was kind of depressed. I, I guess he was bored as well. There was a lot yeah. of that. So he just... Because there was more free time on yeah, his Yeah, so he just, you know, started eating a lot more. So we, we used to clash about that. You know, I, I didn't help either because... You know, like you mentioned, I'd lost weight. So I, I was also culpable where, where, where eating and, you know, all of that. So uh, it was just a lot to deal with. Yeah. And then when he passed, it, there was tons of guilt on my part. Like maybe I should have done more. more. Maybe I should have, you know, called someone and said, you know, insisted that, you know, you need to our diet to and everything, you know, but when you yourself are not even living that lifestyle, like that. it's really hard to say, okay, you know what, don't eat or don't, you know. So I, I went through a, a whole lot. I mean, and his passing was so sudden, so unexpected that <sighs> sometimes I still have to remember that there are times when I forget and I've been dealing with that lately. It's it's a weird headspace to be in because the kids, uh, you know, children are children. Once in a while, they get the feels, they cry. Yeah. They come to me, they cry. Oh, I miss daddy so much. But there are also times where they're happy. So I don't want to be like a Debbie Downer and yeah. not be happy, happy with, with them. them. But then when I catch myself happy and smiling, you feel like, oh, and I, I feel forget so you. guilty. Like, what are you happy about? Oh. You know, why are you happy? Are you supposed to be happy? Especially at work. A lot of people don't. And, and you know, it was even hard having to go to work because the new job, I was I was supposed to start work on May 2nd and it passed on April 30th. So it was like it passed the weekend. I was supposed to start work. work. So there was that. OK, at that point, I was even thinking about work. So but they called and said, OK, are you still coming, coming. or not? I was like, look, my husband just passed and uh, I'm still trying to think about you know funeral arrangements i'm not in this headspace now but how long can you give me realistically before i can start work and he said you know let's give you a month after the funeral and see how that goes mm -hmm. you know and then that happened funeral happened like two weeks after and everybody around me was like you have to go back to work you have to you something. need 
first of all, you need the income and you can't just, what are you going to do? Sit, sit around and hope. Yeah. What are you going to do? You have two kids to take care of. I have a 14 year old and I have a 12 year old. How are you going to navigate that? How are you going to, you know, so I have to go to work. I, I still love that to say, you know, even at work, a couple of people know people that were part of my, you know, interview, interview. and all of that and they knew about the delay, my line manager and so forth. But my other colleagues at work, every time, you know, someone just mentions something about marriage um, or, oh, your big time's wife. Uh, oh, no, not like your big time's wife. Like, uh, are you married? I say, yes, but my husband died two months ago. They look at me in shock. And the first thing they say is you're strong. Yeah. But I'm not, not strong. strong. You know how you get that thing where you, you say, I'm okay, but I'm not, not okay. Not okay, yeah. I'm smiling, but, but in my head, yeah, silence yeah. screaming the whole time. That, that's 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 been my reality for, for a while you know there are times when i feel like i'm having a panic attack i can't breathe because i keep replaying that time i was in the room when this happened oh wow i don't think i've told you guys the story no, because I'm, I'm going to need this in a minute i'm on my laptop doing some work we was watching something was he watching outlander outlander i think on netflix okay <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Maybe you shouldn't give me this. It's just like a trigger. Sorry. He was, uh, so he passed out and he was sleeping. So, and when he sleeps, he usually snores. So that's, and I had my headphones on, you know, because uh, I told him to wait for me to watch the episode with him. And he said, you know, no, he couldn't wait so he, because he usually sleeps. He, he's on a, it was, that's present tense, so weird. He was on a ton of, uh, oof. Sorry. Sorry. Medication. So, uh, He's usually asleep by 7.38. Okay, so he was... Uh, I, I couldn't tell if he was sleeping or not. So I was, I was doing some work on the laptop and then I just turned, I removed the headphones and I heard him, I could hear him snoring. So in my mind, I was like, ah, ah you yeah, didn't even tell me and you're sleeping, you know? So I just closed the laptop. I need to get dinner to eat. I'd literally dropped the food on the table in the room. I just heard him, like, it was almost like a cough or like a big wheezing sound and he just shut up so i'm like what now you know because i'm always like yeah Yo, oh you're, you're, dramatic. you're dramatic i mean my husband has a headache he thinks he has a brain aneurysm <laughs> and he's googling stuff i'm like don't google any symptoms i mean if yeah. you're sick let's go to the, the hospital. hospital and he's also that kind of person that has malaria me because i know i have to cook i have to clean i have to take care of the house when i feel like i might be a bit off i want to have like a fever Immediately, I go on malaria meds. You know, I take care of myself. So I don't get to that point where I'm... You can't do yeah, anything. Can't, thank you. Yeah. So, but for him, he gets to that point. So he's just on the bed, shivering like, oh, I'm so sick. And then I have to take, take care, care of him. him. So in my mind, I was like, oh, I was like, okay, so what now? And then I now saw he was like stretching. His eyes were bulging. And it was, it was, it was the weirdest thing, you know. And then the next thing, they were calling me inside. They said, the doctor came, called me inside. You know, I didn't even know at that time he had passed. They didn't want to tell me. The next thing I saw, his cousin came and said, uh, for me, one of me has passed. I can't tell you what happened after that. All I know is I heard my son screaming, no, daddy can't go. Daddy can't be dead, you know. And then, uh, it, it was difficult. You hold, know, sorry, to... hold. Ah, yeah. You don't cut things like this. Yeah, no, 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 don't I... cut this. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> We are sweating. Yes. <laughs> okay, three, two, Thank one. You. you can't see it, Abby. Come on, those. See, see, I'm not mad. And see, I'm not mad. So, I think you've, 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 I mean, you've touched and you've spoken about how. Hold. The garbage Hold. truck. Right. I heard it since I was waiting for your seat now. Get off! It's too late. Remember when you said those vows? In its sickness and in health, oh. till death do us part. For richer. Better for worse. Yeah, for richer or poorer. Yes. People just say those words and don't really understand the import of taking those vows until certain things happen. Yeah. And when they come... You might not be ready. It might make or break your marriage. Yes. Today we want to talk about unforeseen circumstances. circumstances in marriage. Welcome to another episode of Love and Everything in Between.
So we've been married for 11 years and six months. And in that time, we've been through a lot of ups and downs. Um, we've had quite a lot of unforeseen circumstances, <laughs> things we didn't plan for, things we never thought would happen, mm -hmm. um, things that nobody ever prays for. Yeah. Um, but I think we should talk, talk about today the, about the really significant yeah, ones that significant ones are. that really shook shook both of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the first one that comes to mind is um, when you had to have surgery. Yes. Um, I kept stalling. So I had this um, particular condition. I never knew what it was really, but I just know that at some point, randomly, I would just get out of breath. I'll have this pain in my chest, you know, and then I hate going to the hospital, like really hate going to the hospital. So I made a couple of calls and then, you know, self-medication. I was told to take a certain um, pain medication and i'll take it and i'll feel fine so that medication i can't get over the counter so i actually have to have ask for prescription so i remember vividly going to the hospital for something else and i was like oh i need to top up on this um pain medication because i had the incident the night before so i went in to see the gp and i was like oh i'll I'm, i don't need you to see me for anything in particular i would like for you to just give me a prescription for this drug and the doctor just went, why? So it was a new hospital, new doctor. And I was like, no, I have this um, persisting pain that I take it for. And I was like, okay, what causes the pain? I'm like, I can't do this. Like, if you're not going to give me the medicine, don't worry, I'll go somewhere else. And I was like, no, 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 no. And the guy actually got up and locked the door. And I was like, I want to really get to the bottom of this. Why? I'm not a fan of just giving medication. And I was really irritated at the time. I was like, you're wasting my time. I need to go. I have things to do. And I was like, bear with me. Just play along. What's causing it? And then, you know, we had a series of questions, had conversation. I told him my history and he says, okay, I want to run this test, this test, this test. And I'm like, I just came here for this. Why am I ending up having to mm -hmm. do this? And, you know, he was calling. I'm like, oh, no, it's taking longer than normal. I have to do an ECG. I have to do an X-ray. Like, I'm really irritated but anyway not a problem so we did all the tests and the next day i came in and they're like oh my cholesterol level was extremely high i had to be on some certain drugs to bring down my cholesterol but that they didn't get a proper reading on the x-ray and would recommend i go see a cardiologist and i'm like ah. how did we end up here you know so went to the cardiologist cardiologist was like he doesn't think it's a heart problem I should go and do an MRI. Mm. So it was when we did the MRI, we now found out that I had a bronchogenic cyst placed right in between my lungs and oh. my heart. So for every time it was inflamed or large, it was pressing on my heart, which would cause the shortness of breath. And then, you know, because it's in a very awkward space, it would now cause the pain. So, and the only way to get out was going to be surgery. And boy, <laughs> I wasn't interested in having surgery. And I told them, I was like, you know what, guys? You've given me all, a lot to think about. Um, I'm going to get back to you. I'm going to get back to you guys. And um, I just need time out. You know, so I called a zillion doctors asking, what is the best way? How do I get rid of it? You know, and everybody kept saying, beauty. The longer you take, it's going to keep getting bigger. So I was like, okay. So went on a trip, came back, and then I went to see a bronchogenic, no, a, what's the name of the doctor? The, cardiothoracic no, surgeon. Yeah, cardiothoracic surgeon. <laughs> I'd never heard of all these names before. So we had to go see one, and then he was like, oh, he would have to do a surgery, open my side, open my ribs, get the mask out, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm not doing that. You know, and I was like, oh, recovery time would be more, you know, so it was just like a lot, a lot of information. And I was just like, I wasn't ready. And I actually avoided having to do that surgery for the longest of times. It was like a year, a year plus. plus. I kept, you know, diddly daddling. Even the doctor I had seen said, but okay. eventually saw another surgery. Yeah, so he said, said if I wanted to do, do minimal, uh, minimal evasive which is not having to give me a big scar because my skin also doesn't um, feel, well. feel well with scars. So I said, okay, fine. 
I did that and then he recommended the doctor that could do it minimal evasively. I went to see him and I was even, I'd even worked myself up to saying, okay, I would do it. But, um, the costs, they kept changing the cost on me. So I just said, you know what, if they're this, um, meat picky mm -hmm. about the cost that I'm not sure about the aftercare and I don't want to die. So <laughs> I didn't go for it. And then. I started having more pain and eventually I'd agreed, went in for surgery. So I had to call my mom to come stay with the kids because I didn't know how strong I would be after surgery. And after surgery, thankfully, everything was fine. I came out, I was doing well, recovery was happening. So I think the next day after surgery, my mom comes to see me and we're all having a conversation. Having a conversation yeah. And I'm like, okay, mommy, what do you want to eat? And then she says, she doesn't say anything. And I'm like, she's just quiet for a little while. This is really weird. Mommy, what do you want to eat? And, and then, then she, the next, she just goes, and then, and then she just starts like, and she has a seizure like, right there. A, and I'm with, so she the has, tube. 